Hello, hi. Welcome back to our latest section of this um, uh, chapter of cardiac anatomy. This section we will be covering aortic valve, um, pulmonary valve, as well as um, the aortic root. The system we will adopt here in describing arterial valves is slightly different from the system we used in the atrioventricular valves. So in here, the fact that uh, um, arterial valves do not have subvalvular apparatus, they don't have a suspension uh, system, hence uh, it makes it slightly different. So we will start by, by uh, highlighting a few terminology, uh, making sure we don't use terms interchangeably inappropriately, and then we will describe the um, a few incisions. Surgeries around this area are most um, um, are mostly bespoke, such as uh, reimplantation, aortic root reimplantation, remodeling, uh, replacement, aortic root replacement, um, um, aortic root enlargements. You need to understand where will incisions take you. Um, aortic valve repair, for instance, as well. So you need to understand where incisions will take you. And finally, we'll be discussing the annular relations, just as the same system we used before. All uh, valves are surrounded by four structures except the pulmonary valve. Now, the terms I would like to highlight in here, starting with the nomenclature of the leaflets. First of all, the term leaflet. Um, um, so the leaflet is the thin structure, um, fibrous structure covered with endothelium or endocardium from one side, from the aortic side or the arterial side, it's endothelium from the uh, ventricular side, it's endocardium, and it, uh, it acts as the gate between the two chambers. These white, bits are referred to as the leaflets. Also, sometimes some authors refer to them as cusps. Now, you need to understand cusp is not sinus. The sinus is the part of the artery, the, the first proximal part, which is dilated. Three dilatations occur around the pulmonary and aortic valves referred to as sinuses. Cusp, leaflet, sinus. Now, commissure and uh, zones of position. Uh, there is a bit of controversy here between the two terms, between morphologists and uh, uh, surgeons. Morphologi morphologists such as, uh, for instance, uh, Dr. Anderson, uh, um, uh, Robert Anderson, who is one of the two founders of the science of cardiac morphology, he refers to it as the um, um, zone of opposition, looking at it, and a uh, uh, commissioner, sorry, looking at it from an English literature point of view, refers to the point of um, um, opposition and the point of uh, approximation between two structures. So, thinking about it that way, all the free wall of the uh, cusps should be referred to as zones of opposition or commissures. Yet, Traditionally speaking, surgeons only refer to commissures as the terminal three points which are around the circumflex of the uh, valve. So this, this, and this are referred to as commissures in the point of view of surgeons. Um, to avoid confusion, um, we will um, the morphologist uh, opted to use the term zone of opposition to refer to the point of um, approximation between the free walls and commissures to refer to these three terminal uh, points. Uh, so now we established cusp, leaflet, sinus, zones of oppositions, uh, commissures. Now aortic root, aortic annulus, again, um, aortic root is a big complex hemodynamic structure. It's a box which includes all the le valve leaflets as well as the um, its attachments commissures, zones of opposition, the annulus, the sinotubular junction on the top. So it's a box, it's a, it's a space. Um, now the term aortic annulus, this is a term where there is another controversy here. Now morphologists, anatomists um, use the term annulus to refer to as ring. Um, uh, it is understood that there is no uh, a proximal structure which is uh, a perfect ring uh, in the aorta or um, the pulmonary valve. The, the proximal attachment points of the aorta and the pulmonary valve looking in a, in a, in a, in a, in a more like a coronet-like structure. So it has dips and semilunar or um, 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 half moon kind of structure, C-shaped structure. So it, it takes the form of a coronet, a small crown. Um, Yet, surgeons still use the term annulus to refer to as the proximal attachment of the valve um, simply because this is the point where, they, where we attach the valve, this is the, the point where the valve uh, is uh, snugly um, uh, stopped or the least diameter where the valve is um, 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 fastened into the uh, LVOT, the, the, the most proximal point of that. 
Um, again, the term annulus, we will discuss this in further more details. In aortic root, we'll understand the anatomical, histological, physiological annulus. We will come to that in details. These are some of the terms we will be using in this section. I wanted just to highlight and um, uh, underscore the importance of understanding how not to use them interchangeably. Going back to the terminology section. So, again, the aortic valve consists of three um, uh, cusps, leaflets two of which um, 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 are located into two sinuses which give origins to the two main coronary arteries the right coronary and the left coronary hence we have the right coronary sinus the left coronary sinus and the leaflets within these sinuses or the leaflets corresponding to these uh, sinuses are referred to the right coronary cusp and the left coronary uh, uh, cusp it's important here to understand that right and left it does not mean the direction because they are not right not left uh, actually, the right coronary sinus is anterior, the left coronary sinus is anterolateral, uh, posterior lateral, sorry, so they are not right and left. The term is referred to because of the corresponding coronary artery originating from this sinus. Having said that, in cases of congenital coronary anomalies, we have to uh, adopt a, a, an alternative uh, means of, uh, of term, um, terminology because if the coronaries are anomalous, you cannot use right and left uh, coronary sinus anymore. Hence, the alternative terminology uh, names the right coronary sinus as number one and the left as number two. Also, the, the easy way to, to think about that, if the surgeon is imaginary standing in the non-coronary uh, sinus, so whatever sinus is on his right side is referred to as the right coronary sinus, whatever sinus on his left-hand side is the left, regardless the origin of the coronary arteries, um, whether they are anomalous or normal. Um, this is the terminology for the aortic valve. Now, we'll have a look now at our famous section, um, to explain a further more of the structure of the valve. So opening the uh, aorta, as we explained before in the fibroskeleton, so the aorta is a, um, 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 a tube, and we're opening the tube from this side and laying it open. Now you're having a look inside the aorta. What you can see on the top is the aortic valve, the mitral valve is beneath. It's important here to delineate or highlight the fact that the fibroskeleton, as we explained before, extends upwards between the leaflets in the form of what we call the interleaflet triangles which are very important in the physiology or hemodynamics of aortic valve as we will see in the section of aortic root so the membranous septum the aortomitral curtain and the uh, muscular septum we explained that before in the fibroskeleton section and then the fibroskeleton extends upward and from the points of the medial and lateral fibrous body uh, and creates the uh, um, interleaflet triangles now the two of which are mainly fibrous or mostly fibrous, then one of which between the right and the left coronary cusps is actually muscular. As we explained, this is uh, sprouting up from the muscular septum. It is uh, muscular. Uh, this is important to understand as we explain, going to be explaining in the aortic root how this is affecting the hemodynamics of the aortic root. Um, next is the incisions. As we explained, the best way to look at this is through the transverse section. Remember, fibrous skeleton brings together three out of the four valves, the tricuspid, mitral, and aortic uh, valve. Now, if we, if we do incisions, if we create incisions um, at certain points of the aorta, where will that take us? Why is it important to understand that? Um, equally important also in the pulmonary valve. So consider the room behind me. This is a big wall extending from the right hand to the left hand sides of the room. If I make an incision at any point of this uh, wall, I need to understand that any particular point will take me to a different destination. So we need to understand the landmarks. Where are we? In order, once we cut, we know where are we going to or what structure will, what is the destination to a structure. So if I, if I for instance, um, take an, um, um, an incision through this point of the wall, it will lead me to the auxiliary room on the left side. This side, again, a, a different destination. In the center, a different destination. I use certain landmarks to take me to the right destination I'm looking for. As we explained, most of surgeries around aortic root and um, uh, aortic surgery are bespoke. You need to be able to tailor it and understand where will the incision take you. Now, um, also you need to understand what level are we. So if you are at the level of the annulus, these are the annular relations, which we will be discussing now later and in, in the next few seconds. Um, going upwards, 
this is what we are explaining now, the incisions on a higher level than the annulus. Now, um, uh, the interleaflet triangles, remember, those are points of extension of the fibrous skeleton. So these are common points which glue together all three chambers, the aorta, the, the right and the left. So if you go, uh, um, if you cut an incision into the center of the interleaflet triangle, remember, it will take you from one chamber to the other. Hence, we always are cautious during um, um, uh, surgery, uh, um, stitching around these points because they are common points. These are the like the poles or the pillars between the two chambers of the two rooms. It's like drilling a hole into the central pole of your house. You will definitely cut from one, you will go from one place to the other. Remember, so the interleaflet triangle between the nun and the left will take you to the right atrium and the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve, conductive tissue. Cutting an incision directly into the um, uh, interleaflet triangle between the nun and the left will take you directly into the roof of the left atrium, subaortic curtain, the anterior mitral valve leaflet. Remember that. Now, um, if you go, if you if you move a bit lateral away from these interleaflet triangle, incisions will take you through the transverse sinus and then the respective chamber. So remember that clearly the interleaflet triangles are extensions of the fibrous skeleton. They are the common points or the points of attachment between the three chambers, the aorta, mitral, and tricuspid valve. Um, this is very nicely uh, highlighted in the reference I'm putting down there. Uh, feel free to have a read of this paper. It's a very enjoyable paper, and um, um, I personally learned a lot from it. Now, the, the third interleaflet triangle is, um, uh, will take you to a potential space regardless where you make the incision, whether in the center of the interleaflet triangle, a bit right, a bit left, upwards, down, it will take you into a potential space between the aorta and pulmonary, and that's because, as we explained in the fibroskeleton, the pulmonary valve sprouts as a separate structure from all the other three chambers. Hence, uh, these are the uh, sites of the incisions and where they will take you. Also, it explains, for instance, this particular point. It explains why um, um, during Manugian procedure, if you cut into the commissure between the non-coronary and the left coronary, you will find yourself patching the roof of the left atrium because this is the point of, uh, of connection between the aorta and the roof of the left atrium. Um, um, whereas in the neck procedure, you are still within the fibroskeleton, you are not into the roof of the left atrium, and um, um, uh, hence um, it is um, postulated by some of the authors that neck procedure, um, um, which was uh, established before the Manugian procedure in 1970, it was, it will give you um, um, less uh, enlargement or annular enlargement, whereas Manugian procedure will give you an extra amount of enlargement. It has been pu um, uh, put forward in 1979. It's the later procedure out of the two. But surgeons most commonly use neck procedure simply because it's an extension of the normal oblique aortotomy, and also it is less cumbersome in, um, in patching and closing. As I said, the, the, um, the uh, Manugian procedure will have to be patching the roof of the left atrium, which is a very delicate point of the anatomy, whereas in the neck procedure, you are patching the fibrous skeleton which is more tough hence it's less liable to bleeding although it provides you with less amount of annual enlargement uh, these are some of the applied points you can um, uh, you can extract from these, uh, this this uh, part of anatomy. Now, going into the annular relations. So, going down with the level of your incisions, going to the annular relations as we are used to. There are four structures surrounding all uh, valves uh, except the pulmonary valve. So, the four structures in here. It's easy now to deduct from the previous section. So, the membranous septum, the muscular septum, and the uh, um, uh, aortomitral curtain, as well as the bundle of his. And we explained before why it's the bundle of his, not the AV node. Now, the, uh, it's important here to understand where is muscle and where is uh, fibrous tissue, simply because, for instance, if you are operating to relieve a subaortic uh, uh, obstruction, or you need to be cutting into muscle, so you are aiming at mainly below the right coronary cusp or the commissure between the right and the left. Whereas if you are aiming to fibrous tissue, such as in annular dilatation procedures, annular enlargement procedures, nick or manugian, you are aiming mainly at the non-left coronary uh, uh, cusp. You avoid the commissure and the commissure between the right and the left uh, and the right coronary cusp to avoid the bundle of his. These, uh, this is an important applied point you understand from the annular relations of aortic valve. 
um, going next to pulmonary valve now um, pulmonary valve again in a comparable manner we will be starting with the surgeon's view as you can see here again terminology now in, in pulmonary valve it's hard to to name the cusps or sinuses simply because there are no coronary arteries and also the position of the valve as you can see here the pulmonary valve is positioned in an angled um, uh, manner to the heart and angled manner to the uh, um, aortic valve if you look inside as you can see they are both in angles so one of them is going this way the other is going this way they create an angle to each other it's hard to call it right left anterior or posterior it's positioned in an oblique manner within the heart and in relation to the aortic valve hence the the terminology or the way to call it is um, was relying on the fact uh, of the facing um, with the aortic valve so the two cusps or two sinuses which are um, facing the aortic valve are referred to the facing cusps facing leaflets or the facing sinuses the chambers the dilatations of the wall facing sinuses facing cusp and the one further away anterior to the surface of the heart is referred to as the non facing cusp or uh, sinus um, now looking at the incisions incisions in pulmonary valve are more straightforward so it's easily understood so uh, incision from the uh, pulmonary valve going upwards leads you to the pulmonary arteries which is used in pulmonary arterioplasty or pulmonary trunk arterioplasty as well as going from the incision from pulmonary valve going downwards leads you to uh, uh, the uh, uh, RVOT in um, fallow repair procedures or pulmonary steno or subpulmonary stenosis procedures and hence uh, the incisions are straightforward. One of the important incisions which we would like to outline in here is the RVOT access to subaortic uh, um, uh, stenosis. So uh, remember now you're opening the RVOT, you're opening the uh, the anterior surface of the pulmonary valve you are faced with a big wall like the one behind me now you need to understand where to go to to reach the LVOT so your target your aim is underneath the two facing uh, the commissure between the two facing uh, cusps or sinuses that's where your target is that's your landmark if you cut underneath that you will be directly into the LVOT and you can access the subaortic stenosis as we explained earlier, this is the value of understanding the incisions um, uh, points of the valves. Now, annular relations, it's more uh, straightforward or easier than the aortic valve simply because it sprouts from a, a separate muscular structure, the infundibulum. Hence, there are not much uh, uh, annular relations. But one of the important relations is the left main stem traveling behind the pulmonary valve, as you can see here. In this diagram so if we ex uh, um, extrude the pulmonary valve from its position you can see how the left main stem is running behind it and one important structure is the first septal artery how it gains access to the septum um, uh, in very close proximity to the commissure between the two facing cusps this is of importance during Ross procedure uh, surgeon needs to be familiar or aware of this relation in order to avoid injury to the first septal, uh, septal artery which will lead to unfortunately um, 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 defects in the conductive tissue as well as defective blood supply to the septum and reduced uh, left ventricular function post op um, these are the anatomical or applied points in the anatomy of pulmonary valve um, i will leave you now with this uh, mcq question and hopefully we'll meet in the next section uh, of this chapter thank you very much